Good morning everyone, it's Kathy Champion and you're back with me in my craft room here at Random Acts of Crafting. Today I thought I would um, just kind of give you some little tips. Sometimes it's important to learn some little tips and things that you may not have known. Um, one thing that I learned recently, and y'all have all seen me struggle with opening these stamp um, pads. Well, I found out there's a trick to it. If you go up to the top, right here, in between these two dots where, where, the, where it falls open, if you go right inside here and push like that, it automatically opens your ink pad. And then all you have to do is open and slide. And then to close it back, just slide from this end. I always get ink on me, y'all. Um, but all you want to do is slide it and then grab it right here and pull and then always make sure that you snap these ink pads back together. You never ever want to leave an ink pad open because your ink will dry up. And we don't want to have to buy a re-inker until we, we need to. So let me get a little bit of alcohol here to lift this ink off of my finger. And I am going to, I got ink on my pad, and I usually try to make sure that I wipe my pad down so I don't have ink on it. But anyway, there we go. That's how you can open your ink pads every time with absolutely no issues. And if you're pushing straight down, you want to push down and up. Because when that downward, upward motion, um, like this... See, I pushed down, but I also pushed out, and that's what causes that to pop up. So, just remember that little tip. The other thing is the trimmer. Now, y'all know I cannot sing the praises of this trimmer enough for the fact that you can score and cut. The fact that you have the slip that allows you to bring it over to do a perfect 6-inch cut every time. Your arm extends out to a little over 17 inches, right there, and it is really one of the most versatile. It has the non-skid non, uh, feet on the bottom of it. Um, the only issue that I had found with this was trying to open it. Sometimes when you're pulling on this little handle, it doesn't want to open. There's a trick. Don't do it from here. This is basically your little handle just to hang on to it when you're cutting or scoring. The trick is to come up here at the top and just, all you want to do is push out and up and it will come up every time. Um, I struggled, I struggle with it and I find myself still going like this. You, you don't want to break this trimmer. It is such a nice trimmer. So just come up, push it out and up. And that's all there is to it. I thought everybody that has this trimmer needs to know that. Uh, so they're not struggling with pulling. You can also do it from down here. If you push up, if you just push up like that. And this is the bottom right here. I'm going to push it over so you can see the bottom. But push up and open. And it will open like a breeze every time. And again... This trimmer is $25 and it's worth every penny because I love the measurements, the way everything's marked off. It's marked off here in quarters, quarter inches this way, but you also have your eighths and your sixteenths up here. It has uh, centimeters up here. So say, for example, if you watch a video that's European and they give you the measurements in centimeters, you can very easily come to this trimmer and use the centimeters. And also the centimeters runs down this way and across the bottom. Great, great, great way of making a trimmer where we can use it with our, our metric system or our imperial measuring system, which is what we use here in the States. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to show you and I think this will be very helpful for a lot of people. If you have a stamp, whether it's a solid image like this, or um, I'm, I'm going to grab a piece of cardstock because I want to see if I can show you this. And I think this will come in real handy for a lot of us 
that absolutely hate fussy cutting, but sometimes it's necessary. Um, if you take your stamp, especially these cling stamps, put it down on your paper, and if you need to hold it, and you know you can, you can do it like that. You can hold it with another piece of uh, another pencil eraser. I just hold it with my fingers, and take your take a pencil, and just trace around it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just give yourself a little outline around it. And you turn it around. Go up this side. Come around the top and just like that. Now when you cut, when you get ready to stamp this, if you stamp it right into there, and let's, let's do it. Let's go ahead and stamp it and I'll see if I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm going to actually stamp this in Let's do this in the Blackberry Bliss because this is a dark ink and I wanted to do this using one of the Stampin' Up! ink pads and see I used that trick and my ink pad opened right up. So I'm going to go ahead and load up some ink on this stamp just like that making sure I've got a good amount of ink on it and now I am going to hold it over top of where I traced. Now I didn't trace it for placement. You're going to see what I, the reason I traced it. And I'm going to put that down on there and I'm just going to let it transfer putting some nice even pressure. Okay we have a beautiful stamped image. Let me wipe my stamp off using my, my Simply Chamois. I love the stamp cleaner. This is the most ingenious way to clean your stamps because it's water. This thing, even though it looks stained, and you can go and wash it out in the sink, the stain's going to stay on it. But look at that stamp. And I'm going to put the numbers to these products in this video so that you can um, order them if you like or you can save that for future reference if you want to order but this is what I want to show you now I'm going to close my ink pad back because like I said we don't want let's see let's push it this way and then pull it we don't want to have a dried out ink pad but I'm going to show you if you struggle with fussy cutting and yet you want to have that little edge border around, this is a great way to do it. Just cut now right inside that pencil line. Just right inside of the pencil line. Let that pencil line be your guide. If you don't have dies for this, and I do know that the dies for this does not have the uh, cutouts for this. So this is a perfect stamp set. And this one was the um, Silhouette Scenes. But it does have a set of dies and I have them in here but it doesn't have the dies for these individual pieces. The dies are totally different. So, so I'm just going to go up inside making sure that I'm staying within on the other side of that um, pencil line that I drew. I'm going to cut this away because it is in my way. I'm just going to cut that away just like that. And then I'm going to continue up just staying to the left of that pencil line. And this will give you that perfect border that you would want around your stamp. And it makes it so easy to fussy cut these by doing it this way. And again, the perfect little border all the way around without you having to feel like that you are not staying within the perimeters that you need to. This is just, this is actually just a little, a little cheat hack of doing this. But you know what? I love it. I love the fact that you can come in and you can cut this like this 
and still keep the integrity of your stamp. Look at that. Is that not precious? And so easy to do. Uh, and that took no time at all. You just have to remember before you put your stamp on your stamp block to make sure that you um, draw around it. And that will work for florals as well. As well. If you have a floral that you wanted to cut, but you don't want to go around every little flower, here's a, here's a stamp set that came in paper pumpkin. Um, this is a perfect example right there. I'm going to go ahead and pick that up on my stamp block. I'm going to lay that over here. And let me grab another piece of cardstock. And we're going to do this in... Um, I think I'll do this in the black. I'm just going to use a versus one. Making sure that I get that inked up good and not have ink where I don't want it. Just like that. And then I'm going to stamp this down. Nice even pressure. Okay. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't draw around it. That's okay. These are photopolymers, so they're going to work a little bit different than a cling stamp because the cling stamp is going to give you that outside edge uh, very defined. I'm going to clean this up with my, my little chamois. And like I said, I will put the item numbers, which will make it so much easier if you decide you want to order any of this. The um, item numbers will be linked right here somewhere in the in the front of this video. You'll see it either up in the corner or across the bottom, depending on how I decide to do it. Um, I'm going to pull this off of the stamp block, and I'm going to see if it will work the same way. So let's just lay it back down here onto our stamped image. And I'm pretty sure we can do this. We're going to put our fingers on it, and we are just going to go around it. And it does. All right, now let's cut this out and see how it looks with the little the little border around it. So I'm just going to come up right here, and I'm going to cut again. I'm going to cut right on the inside of that pencil line. So I'm actually cutting the pencil line away. And remember, anytime you're fussy cutting, you do better to turn the paper than your scissors. It gives you a much nicer, even uh, cut to turn your paper rather than constantly fighting and trying to turn your scissors. Just like that. Yeah, if it's some places that got a little close like it did there and you still have pencil line on it when you uh, finish your cutting, you can very simply take an eraser and go back over that and all is well that ends well. But there's that little piece, and see, now you don't have to worry about going in and trying to trim out all of that. You could actually come in now and color this, and it would be ready to go on to um, as an embellishment. Just that simple. So those are three little tips that I wanted to bring you this morning. I'm hoping that these tips helped you, and I hope that you would be able to take something away from this that, um, that would help you. I believe that this particular stamp set and dies. Let me let me look and see if this one is coming back. 
and I'm not sure if it is or not. So let me check for you because if it's not coming back, um, I'm just going to go to my index of my new catalog. I haven't got my actual physical copy yet, um, but I do have it here on um, on my my phone. So I'm looking to see if that one is coming back. Silhouette Scenes is coming back, um, and I believe the dies are too. I don't think it's coming back in a bundle, but it is coming back. Um, as a stamp set and a, a set of dies, which is great because this is such a cute um, set and I'm going to be doing something with the little girl on the swing um, and the, the die for the tree on this is gorgeous. So we will be definitely be doing that um, pretty soon. So anyway, if any of these little tips that I, that I brought you today um, is a help on how anything from opening the ink pad to lifting the arm on your uh, trimmer. Just remember, push it out and up, or push it in and up. No, it, it would still be out. I need to set it down to do it. Just like that. But I really like grabbing it from up here because I, normally the, I'm, I'm working to the upper portion of my uh, trimmer. So I thought that was just a neat little trick and I actually discovered this all by myself. I got so tired of fighting with it. Sometimes it would come up fine and other times it would just hang but this right here it comes up every time. So again I hope these tips have been helpful and if they have leave me a comment and if they haven't leave me a comment that way too. Your comments that you leave on any of and all of my videos uh, really helps my rating in YouTube. Um, they look at all of the things, the, the thumbs up, when y'all like a video, when you comment on a video, when you watch a video through its entirety. All of that counts toward building me as a YouTube creator and helps improve my status with YouTube. So, so that I can continue to bring y'all videos that I so love doing. Uh, so I appreciate your support. So please like, share, and uh, subscribe. Those are the things. If you're coming to this video and you have never subscribed to my video or my channel, please hit that subscribe button. And if you do subscribe, if you ring that little bell, you can choose how you get notifications. So that's always very important because if you want to know every time that a video goes up by me, it will send a little ding to your phone. It'll let you know that a video has been posted by me. And you don't have to go watch it right then. You can watch it at your leisure. It's not going anywhere. So that is always a, a good thing to know. Um, if you have other friends that might may be interested, friends or family or whatever, that might be interested in what I bring to you, share this video with them. Hit that little share button and, and send it over to their email or their messenger or whatever and let them take a look and hopefully they will subscribe too. And the more people we have into our family, uh, it's like having your own family to grow. It's always a good thing. So until we craft again and until I come up with some more uh, tips to help you along with your crafting, God bless each and every one. And I pray that you will be safe, that you would be prosperous, and that this uh, uh, pandemic has not affected your household too much. Uh, my prayers are with each and every one of you for health and happiness and prosperity. And until we craft again, as I always say in closing, let everything you do and say bring glory to Jesus. He is so worthy. You think what he did. And, you know, um, someone brought it to my attention the other day that they, they I don't think they fully grasp the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And even the Word. It says in John 1 that the, that the Word was made flesh. So our Bible is a living Word. It is Jesus in the, uh, in the Word, and the Word was made flesh. So when He came to earth to live as a common man, a man, 
a God among men. Oh, how awesome is that? To have lived during those days and to have been able to walk with Jesus. But you know something? We can walk with Him every day through our prayer life, our devotion, our reading, and most of all, the way we live our lives and the way we treat other people. Let your light shine so that others can see Him. And I will close on that note, and God bless you all. Until we craft again, bye-bye.